So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how Bitcoin Core works or what Bitcoin actually is. So when you download Bitcoin Core from the internet, you're essentially going to download something like this. So whether it's for Windows, Linux, or whatever your MacBook, you're essentially going to come here and get a directory like this. And it's going to contain these kinds of files. So what actually are they? So the blocks is stores downloaded blockchain essentially. It contains transaction data and basically secures the network. And basically the chain state is essentially holds an index of the downloaded blockchain blocks, enabling efficient access to blockchain data. So, and then also the indexes are basically various indexes created from the blockchain for faster searches and data retrieval. And the peers basically tells you how many people connected to your node um, within the Bitcoin network. And wallets basically contains your wallet files. So if we look into the wallets real quick, then we look in here, and you can see the Spectre one, go to Spectre, and we have Spectre open right here. We can see that basically refresh, and we can see the examples here, and then we list this out, we go to example here. So basically the wallet's directly connected to your node, and what you're doing is using the Bitcoin quarter reference off that, so they basically gain accurate representation of how much Bitcoin you actually own rather than using someone else's. So that's essentially how to connect your, what Bitcoin core is. But what actually are you downloading? So what you're downloading is a consensus rules. So essentially 21 million Bitcoin, basically it's a fixed supply. The rules of the adjustments, all the configurations are stored on this directory or the Bitcoin slash Bitcoin directory. And this contains everything to do with the formatting, the connecting, the rules, the, it's basically everything. And then what you're gonna do, basically you can build it from source. And when you build it from source, you're basically gonna download this entire repository, all this code on this, on this website here. And then you're gonna build it until it looks like this. And you get all these files essentially. And that's all you're really doing. You're downloading a piece of software with a agreed upon set of rules. So you're not basically trusting anyone else all the codes open source, you can look at the rules yourself. Like I just looked at the fixed supply of 21 million. So I know that there'll only be 21 million coins. So that way I, I know my currency still can be hyperinflated away. So when you participate in the network, or the Bitcoin core network, you get a public address. And essentially all these public addresses are basically housed on each node. So everyone has a copy of these public addresses. And basically the chain state basically assigns each address a certain amount of funds based on previous transactions. So if you want to send funds out of here, you basically have to prove ownership and that's where the private key comes in hand. So this would pretend this piece of paper is a private key and essentially you're going to sign this transaction with this private key and then you'll be able to send funds to another address. And only with that private key can you prove ownership. And these private keys are not stored on the blockchain. Instead, they are stored by individuals in hardware wallets or software wallets and then they can be used to basically send funds. So once you sign a transaction, it's going to come to the mempool and essentially it's going to wait in an unconfirmed state. It's going to go based on high priority bids. So essentially all your transactions is a bit of data that's going to be requesting to include it in the next block. And it's only a certain amount of size per block. And basically, if you want your transaction to be included, you have to pay a higher fee. If you don't want to pay a higher fee, you're going to wait for a later block because there's only a certain amount of space and those who pay the highest fee are likely to be included in the next block. So all Bitcoin really is, is agreed upon set of rules, whether it be the currency supply, anything like the transactions, the block times, the difficulty adjustments, anything to do with like the rules. Essentially, you're agreeing to do this by downloading Bitcoin Core software. And if you don't agree to these rules, you can basically change them and then basically get a new currency like Ethereum, Dogecoin. That's all it is. They just change the rules and then make their own currency based on Bitcoin and then say it's a new currency that's going to change the world. But in reality, Bitcoin is the one that's fucking the king. But essentially, that's all you're doing. You're downloading a piece of software, you're running it on your machine, and you're verifying transactions. You download the entire blockchain from start to finish, from 2009 till today. And then once you're synchronized, you begin to basically download new blocks, new transactions that are in the mempool, assign those mem uh, transactions to blocks, and then basically pay out miners and make sure that the miners are basically abiding by the consensus rules. That's really it. That's all your software does. It does it all for you. It's not like you're actually there doing it by hand.